right, welcome back. So this is going to be our lecture wrap-up video for lecture number 10 for, again, Engineering 17, Section 2, Spring Quarter 2014 here at UC Davis. So lecture 10 was about uh, covering uh, responses of circuits that have resistors and inductors or resistors and capacitors, so just RL or RC circuits, all right? So remember now, looking, there was two types of responses then for each of the different RL and RC circuits, you either have natural response or the step response, okay? So recall that the natural response had to deal with uh, how the circuit behaves after the inductor or the capacitor is already charged, has a, already has some stored energy in the inductor or capacitor, and then how that uh, the current and the voltages will uh, relax to its steady state condition after some given period of time uh, with that stored energy. The, and then the opposite, the step response was when we uh, are energizing the inductor or the capacitor by hooking them up to some given source and then seeing you know the rise and the voltage or the current with respect to time. Uh, all right, so we looked about you know there was fairly standard ways we looked at each of these different cases. Uh, so for the case of like the RL circuit, we sort of did like a, just a simple KVL loop type expression. So using the standard relationships we know for uh, the voltage across an inductor and of course uh, Ohm's law here for the voltage drop across resistor and we evaluated that in class to come up with the final expression uh, which gives us this uh, the value of the current with respect to time which was uh, I of T is, is I naught so the initial current uh, given from the stored current uh, stored energy in the inductor uh, times this exponential with this decay term which is minus T over tau. Tau is this time constant right so in the, in the case of the RL circuit this tau term is the inductance over the resistance. Okay, so we want to use that and we again sort of denote this to say that if we've gone over a period of five tau's, five uh, time constants, then we say that the circuit is at steady state because it's reached, uh, it's decayed down to almost 99% of the uh, final value or initial value. Rather. So we can also do uh, power, just standard power relationships, P equals IV or I squared R. So you could evaluate that using this value of current that we have here. Uh, total energy then that is uh, uh, dissipated here for an RL circuit would be half of the inductance times that initial stored um, current squared, as it were, as we evaluated that in class. Now similarly for the RC circuit, again if you had some built up charge on your capacitor initially, that's where your energy is coming from. You can evaluate similarly, but similarly, although this is more of like a KCL type of expression uh, where the, we're looking at the current that's coming through the capacitor and then the current through the induct or through the resistor rather through Ohm's law, both those have to sum to zero. We evaluated that. These were again were both the uh, first order dif or ordinary differential equations. So this got us that uh, voltage is the initial voltage V naught times again another exponential with a decay term with the same minus t over tau. However, in this case, the, our tau time constant is rc. We have the rc time constant. Power again can be evaluated just using the voltage expression here, squared over r, and similarly the total energy that would be dissipated is half c v v naught squared. Okay. Now on the opposite side, if we look in, we were talking about step response, right, when we were energizing the circuits. You can go through a very similar process in evaluating those. We came up with the relationships, again, for current in the RL circuit and voltage in the RC circuit. And the important thing to note here is that the, the, uh, we start to see a very similar kind of relationship between all these types of responses, and all these can re really be generalized to a standard form here, such that tells us with whatever term we're, we're interested in determining, such as, let's say, current in the RL circuit case, that's going to be equal to whatever the final value of the current is. In this case, it's Vs over R for an RL circuit that's being hooked, hooked up to a, uh, a source, uh, plus the initial current that was in the circuit. So if there's an I, I not current in your inductor, let's say, before I hook up my source, that would be that term right there, minus, again, that final value, minus Vs over R for that RL circuit case. Then you would still have this exponential term that's minus T over tau. Uh, this term minus t, it's actually t minus t naught, 
depending on where you're evaluating specifically your uh, time ranges, but still, the, generally speaking, minus T over tau, where tau, again, would be dependent on if you have an RL circuit, that's going to be L over R. If you have an RC circuit, the time constant is going to be RC. Okay? So this kind of shows you that you know, despite that there looks like a ton of stuff up here on the board and, and so many different options and things, really it all boils down to this more just general form, which you can use to then apply to you know, any given case you might have, RL, RC, and looking at either natural or step response. So the final topic we touched on was sequ sequential switching. Uh, okay, so this would come into play if you had maybe multiple switches in an RL or, RL or RC circuit. And in that case, the only thing you need to uh, think about doing a little bit differently is simply evaluating the response at each given uh, time range that's appropriate in, in between your, your different switching uh, times, okay? So this simply means that if I open one switch, I need to evaluate the circuit with that switch open before opening the second switch. And when I open that second switch, my initial condition is obviously gonna be determined by whatever's happened uh, after I open that first switch, okay? So that's just a thing you want to keep uh, into uh, keeping your mind when you're when you have to deal with those types of cases uh, with sequential switching, all right? So that was about all for lecture 10 and uh, that you cover it. Uh, as always, stay classy.